Hey everybody, Josh Irving here down here at A1 RV again today. This is a big two slide bunkhouse, kind of with like a uh, precursor to today's modern uh, camp kitchens. It is also, I think a lot of people are going to say, a handyman special. I ain't going to sugarcoat it. She's a little rough. Now it ain't dead. There's still some good to be had here. I think if you're a very first time RVer who, like if you're like me, I'm not the most skilled with tools. <laughs> if I can plug a keyboard and mouse into it, I'll get my way around anything. But I'm not a hacksaw Jim Duggan kind of guy. And if uh, you're like me, this might not be the best opportunity for you. But if you're a little bit handy, you don't mind doing a little bit of winter work to have something for pennies on the dollar come spring, summer, fall time next year for your family, this might still be a solid option for you. I'll do my best to shoot you straight. I'll tell you what I see. I'll do the best of my ability. And if it looks like it works, awesome. Let's iron it out. Let's get you camping. If that one doesn't work, obviously we have plenty of other opportunities here for you. And you can always know that we will shoot you straight either here at A1 RV or down the street at Halet RV. Family owned and operated. And, you know, we're not a big corporate chain store. Our decency and our integrity is what keeps us in business. So, you know, you can always get a square deal here. So let's go ahead and get the spooky stuff out of the way, shall we? This RV has, unfortunately, endured some weather-related cold cracking of the linoleum uh, in pretty much every room in which you see that present. It has, unfortunately, climbed its way from the bathroom all the way up to the bedroom or whichever way you feel like talking about it. In a way, though, <laughs> it does give us a very unique view into the subfloor construction of this RV, and you can see that the flooring in this is not rotted out. Everything is still fresh down there. So what would you do about this? Well, a couple things. I think what I would do is I would, uh, I'd kind of cut that away. I'd peel that up and I just get somebody to put some new flooring down. And considering the budget that you're getting this thing at compared to something with zero defects in the used RV market, you could do that and still be way, way ahead. Um, there's a lot of places that like to see stuff like this for uh, what they call winter work anyway. So you're not occupying their peak summertime. You might be able to get a pretty fair deal on something like this. Alternatively, if what you're looking for is just to really do this on a budget, you could effectively just shave off the parts that are sticking up. You could glue the edges down that are remaining. And as long as you don't mind seeing just the, uh, the laminated top of the uh, OSB decked floor, you're, you know, you'd save a mint doing it that way. Now, given the, you know, the situation here, it's kind of up to you how you want to handle it. I don't have it. I don't have an opinion either way. It's not my money buying this thing. It's yours. I'm just going to shoot you straight and tell you how to how it, how it is. Now, you may have noticed from uh, when we first began the video. There's some things going on in the nose of the trailer. The front termination strip, which is where the roof meets that front wall, had suffered a leak and you can clearly see the wavy wallpaper in here now it's been kind of lashed together resealed back up it's, it hasn't been done in i think necessarily an ideal fashion and again if you're like a wholesaler fix it and flip it kind of thing i think this is a perfect rv for you because you could put a new panel on this wall you could do some resealing and you could probably lay down some flooring real cheap with some linoleum remnants and you could probably flip this thing next year and uh, have yourself a, a pretty decent profit margin on it. Because other than the two things we just looked at, it's actually pretty sharp. Uh, the It's kind of funny. What was old is suddenly new again. This all-white interior hard fell out of style for a while. But isn't it funny? Jayco comes out with their modern farmhouse decor in the Eagle series, and suddenly everybody and their brother is copying that bandwagon. But if you look back through the classic RV market like this, classic being a relative term, only you know, only about 10 years ago, really, you used to see this all the time. Obviously, out now Outback did it standard, and a lot of people really loved it. But Rockwood offered something like this called Tuscan Cream, you know? And beyond the flooring and the front wall, you're gonna find like everything looks pretty good. The cabinetry's not banged up. Um, I don't see like snags and scars. I, I don't see issues. Now, you might wonder like, why is that wide open right there? That's where the power cord feeds in and out. I'm not sure why they popped that panel down, but that's the panel that goes to it. So it's not, 
I, I don't know why it's popped off. It's not missing. It'd be easy to pop right back up there too. Maybe somebody had to rewire plug. I'm not sure. Whatever the case is, it's there. That is an eight cubic foot two-way fridge freezer, by the way, which is way ahead of its time. Uh, almost everything in this class always had a six back when this was built. Also, way ahead of its time, a shower, not a tub, in a, a two-slide kind of private bunk model like this. That was virtually unheard of with some great linen space. I mean, this is a great camper, a great floor plan, frankly. It just, unfortunately, has a couple glitches, which maybe not entirely cosmetic, but primarily cosmetic. Yes, the front walls definitely had some water in it. The flooring is purely a cosmetic issue. It is 100% not a function prevention issue. And again, if you are even a little bit handy, I think you could do some Googling and some YouTubing on maybe some low dollar fixes for stuff like this and get some awesome ideas. I think this is a camper that could absolutely serve someone for a number of years. Uh, provided it receives the proper TLC, which is, you know, it's kind of a handyman, kind of a TLC special. It really just depends on how you're going to boil it down. Now, this is interesting. Usually, when you get a rear bunk room slide like this, you're looking at other bunks over here. But instead, it's almost like a rear den that can convert into a sleeping space. Because that's like TV hookups there. But then you have all the shelf space, dresser space, closet space. There's storage in here. Bunk rooms just don't normally have it's very atypical i i kind of like i kind of like what they did here this is not like it's not all bad there's a lot of good life left in this rv all the windows open for airflow you got pleated shades to block out the sun everywhere easy access storage below the dinette and full overhead storage throughout the rv now you'll see a couple things and this is it has nothing to do with the care on this rv you see some of that contact paper has crept a little bit right there that is from hot cold expansion contraction that's just you know a phenomenon in the same way that uh, a bridge has to be able to expand and contract due to the weather. That's exactly what happened with the contact paper on a, a couple spots on the cabinetry. It's not really widespread, though. And just in case you're curious. Now, little spot here I just noticed out of the corner of my eye. Hold on. Stand by. Okay, that's solid. I just noticed a little funky coloring there, and this is a little bit swollen there. So I think some kind of water has spritzed this area. It's possible that slide may need an adjustment. It's possible it could have already had one and needed one in the past. I'm not sure standing here right now. Um, also, as I'm going through this, I, I, I'll, I'll let you know, like, I'm very good with my eyes and, and picking stuff up, and I can feel like a soft spot with my feet, things like that, but I can't smell. I have a very weak sense of smell. I don't know exactly when it happened. I kind of acutely became aware of it about 10 years ago when my wife was having trouble with our daughter's diapers and I didn't even know something was happening. I just don't have a good sense of smell apparently anymore. I used to, but I don't now. So what I'm getting at is there's something in the air. I can sort of smell it. I can sort of taste it. I don't know if it's just a residual mildew effect i don't know if this rv was smoked in i i can't tell you what it is i can only tell you there's something uh going on here in denmark and i would encourage you if you're still with us again for the right money if the rv works call our team ask the salesperson that you speak to hey would you go out there and literally sniff around this thing tell me what you see and they can probably give you a better idea unfortunately this is one of those things i'm physically not able to provide for our viewers now, in the world of RVing, camp kitchens have become a very common thing. And this is kind of where they started. I, I don't know if Outback was necessarily the first to do it ever, but I know that they were one of the first to do it commonly, and that is those little flip-down cooktop sink job combo things there. That's kind of the uh, ancestor of today's modern camp kitchens. Good pass-through storage in this as well. A lot of aluminum structure, and that's the thing. Structurally, this RV... It's still sound. It's had a couple spots here and there where it might need some work, but the, it's got, in a house, you call it good bones, if that makes sense, um, because, because bones are made out of metal and they don't exactly rot. Now, it needs a bath, something fierce, and the decals, a lot of them are not in awesome shape. I would probably take a power washer to this thing and blow what the decals off and then get some goo gone and get rid of the rest of the stuff, and I'd call it macaroni. Um, the uh, front corner there, you can see, like I said, that front termination strip had suffered a leak, and that means that there's a couple areas up front where you'll see a little bit of waviness. I am kind of just keying into the fact that there's no propane tanks on the front, and this is, uh, you know, an RV that is, we don't own. We're selling this on behalf of the owners over here at A1RV, so that's not something that we would be replacing. 
The RV is as you see it. This is how you would take possession of it unless you work something out like where almost like real estate, you purchase it under specific stipulations that something gets done and then we run that past the owner like an offer like you would see on a house. Now, I haven't been down here, but this should have an enclosed heated underbelly and in fact it still does. I didn't want to promise that without looking just in case something happened in the past of which I wasn't necessarily aware, but it looks like we're in the clear. Now she doesn't have a ladder, but this does have a walk on roof. The general structure between an Outback, Laredo, and Cougar travel trailer built during this generation is effectively the same. They would have the same general build methodology, they just had very different decor and uh, equipment packages. And I've seen nothing for the most part that would stop you from walking around on the roof of the RV, although I would definitely want to investigate that front line near the nose of the RV before you get you know too uh, bold. And the awning. Um, ideally, the material should be replaced. It can probably still open up and provide some function, but it has been flaked apart pretty hard from the weather. I think this RV had been used for a number of years, and then probably I'm going to suspect maybe the kids grew up and they just kind of quit camping for a while. And unfortunately, maybe they were just busy, busy with work and weren't able to maintain it in the way that they normally would have. I'm not, again, I'm only guessing on some of this. So it's something that could definitely use some elbow grease. And uh, if you're good with a, a you know, screwdriver and some things, it probably wouldn't hurt. But I think for not a lot of money and just a little bit of effort, there could be some fresh life breathed back into this thing. Because like I said, it's got that good bones factor. It's reparable. I think that's the best way to look at this one. Handyman, TLC special, something in between there. So if she looks right, give us a call. And if she doesn't, we have obviously got other things, and we will obviously shoot you straight, and you can obviously buy with confidence from the Halet RV group here, whether it's Halet RV down the street or A1 RV, where we're at today, where we sell things on behalf of the owners. Now, don't let that mess with your head. We can still do hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, which, you know, normally if you were buying from a private owner, you wouldn't have those abilities. So we can still provide full dealer service to you here, which is kind of cool. Or if you're in the local area, and you'd like us to sell an RV for you, well, we can do that too. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and have an A1 day, everyone.